All right, all right, you know what time it is. Neil Ratner, Rock Doc here with a story. All right, this past week, Rolling Stones found a Brian Jones would have turned 80 years old. So today, I thought I'd tell you a few things about Brian Jones that you might not know. And as usual, a little background first. All right. So both Jones' parents were interested in music. His father, Lewis, was a piano teacher in addition to his job as an aeronautical engineer. And his mother, Louisa, played piano and organ and led the choir at the church. Now, Jones listened to classical music as a child, but he preferred the blues, particularly Elmore James and Robert Johnson. All right, now, as you would imagine, Jones became a blues musician in his late teens, and he moved to London. And for a brief time, he called himself Elmo Lewis. <laughs> now, in 1962, Brian placed an ad in Jazz News, inviting musicians to audition for a new R&B group at the Brick Layers Arms Pub. Now, pianist Ian Stewart was the first to respond. Of course, later, singer Mick Jagger also joined the band. Now, Jagger and his childhood friend Keith Richards had met Brian when he and Paul Jones were playing Elmwood James's tune, Dust My Broom, with Alexis Corner's band at the Ealing Jazz Club. All right. Now, after Jagger joined Brian's new band, he brought Keith to rehearsals, and Richards then joined the band as well. Okay, now as Keith put it, Jones came up with the name The Rolling Stones. He was on the phone with a venue owner, and the voice on the other end of the line obviously had said, well, what are you guys called? What should I bill you as? And the best of Muddy Waters album was lying on the floor. Track five, side one, was Rolling Stone Blues, and they became the Rolling Stones. <laughs> okay. Now, the Rolling Stones played their first gig on July 12th, 1962 at the Marquee Club in London with a lineup of Jagger, Richards, Jones, Stewart, bass player Dick Taylor, who later went on to play with the Pretty Things, and drummer Tony Chapman. Now, it was widely acknowledged that Brian was an incredible natural musician, quickly moving on from his mastery of slide guitar to more exotic instruments like the auto harp, sitar, and marimba. Now, many credit the Stones' development from straight-jacketed blues devotees to the Anything Goes iconic rock group to Jones's restless, musicianship, restless musicianship. <laughs> now, according to engineer Glenn Johns, he was extremely versatile. After the guitar and harmonica, he learned clarinet and eventually mastered all the reed instruments. <laughs> now, Jones had always been the most enthusiastic traveler among the Stones. In Marrakesh for a holiday, a Moroccan band playing in a market square caught Brian's attention. So he corralled longtime Stones engineer Glenn Johns to go back to Morocco with him, and they spent a week recording the band that Brian had seen. All right. Now, it was Jones' idea to overdub the largely percussion and chant sounds with Western R&B for an album. That's not exactly how it turned out, but we have Brian to thank for turning the world on to the master musicians of Jojuka. That's the record that he and Glenn Johns made. The recording was released in 1971 as... Brian Jones presents The Pipes of Pan at Jojuka and may well be the record that started the genre of world music. How about that? Brian Jones, world music. <laughs> Took Peter Gabriel many years later to actually bring world music to the forefront of uh, the music business in many ways, but Brian was an early devotee. Now, while the group tumbled through a satanic LP in Bigger's Banquet, Jones was going through his own stuff, busted in May of 67 on charges of possession of cannabis and was later given a suspended sentence, placed on a year's probation. Now, between the arrest and the trial, he slipped into a rest home in London to get myself together, he said later. 
Jones's last substantial sessions with the Stones occurred in spring and summer of 1968 when the Stones produced Jumpin' Jack Flash and the Beggar's Banquet album. Brian's legal problems, estrangement from his bandmates, substance abuse and mood swings became too much of an obstacle to his active participation in the band. The Rolling Stones wanted to tour the States in 69 for the first time in three years, but Jones was not in a fit condition to tour, and his second arrest exacerbated problems with acquiring a U.S. work visa. Now, to the public, it appeared as if Jones had left the Stones voluntarily. The other band members told him that although he was being asked to leave, it was his choice how to break it to the public. Jones released a statement on June 9, 69, announcing his departure. In his statement, he said, among other things, that I no longer see eye to eye with the others over the discs we're cutting. He was replaced, obviously, by 20-year-old guitarist Mick Taylor. <laughs> and unfortunately, a month later, Brian was dead after he was found at the bottom of his swimming pool. All right. All right, Brian Jones. You know, we might never have had the Rolling Stones without Brian Jones. Kind of a sad story. Uh, he died very young, but um, is what it is. That's rock and roll. All right, that's my story for today. Hope you enjoyed it. As I always like to tell, well, before I say that, you know where to find me around the internet. I'll have some more stories in the next couple of days. And as I always like to tell you, always remember to keep on rocking. All right. Bye for now. See you soon.